and then this is the most famous uh, image, the, the one that appears on a great many uh, book uh, jackets. Um, this is the world's first mushroom cloud. It literally drew a line across the pages of history. And here is a color shot. And for years, I thought that Los Alamos had simply colorized uh, one of the black and white images because World War II is a black and white war. All the photographs are black and white, but I was wrong. And one of the enlisted men in SED, Jack Aby, who's still with us, uh, was experimenting with the relatively brand new color film. And he took this, and this is the, you know, took several shots, and this is the best one. So this is a photo by Jack Aby. Yeah. Okay, these were taken, the scientists were in the bunkers, uh, the, which were uh, about seven miles away, but the, there was a place called Campania Hill, which was 10 miles away, uh, and that's where people were out of doors. Uh, they were instructed to uh, use heavy glass to shield the, their eyes from the light, they were instructed to uh, uh, lie down um, when the blast wave came. Uh, uh, so they were about 10 miles away in a place called Campania Hill. Uh, now, here's a lead-lined tank. <clears throat> as soon as the, uh, the cloud began to move away, they had two of these. They were going to go into the blast area. A scoop would come out of the bottom and they would take the soil, bring it back to Los Alamos, and <clears throat> analyze it. And when Harry Truman announced the yield of the Hiroshima weapon, uh, he used figures from, uh, that they got from the Trinity site uh, uh, test. They had two of these. They're lined with lead. Uh, the first one, uh, the engine died, and they couldn't get it started. The second one got to the edge of the crater and all the fire. And the new theory is, that the Trinitite rained down on the site from the cloud because they found it on the top of leaves. And so it had literally, the sky rained this radioactive material. You can see uh, that's, that was the Trinitite. Now, the Trinitite turned out to be quite a, an annoyance. It uh, broke apart very easily. Um, this, is, this area gets fierce winds, and so the winds were uh, taking it up and down. So eventually, uh, they put it in barrels and they buried it. And it was one of our graduate students working on his dissertation on the plutonium uh, problem at Los Alamos who discovered where they had buried it, uh, Scott Hughes by name, because no one knew where it was until Scott found it. Okay, now, remember I said the cloud had to go north-northeast and the, the winds were coming for all 360 degrees? This is how the cloud went with the various colors giving the different levels of radiation intensity. And see the large yellow area? And that is the Chapodera Mesa and that was a cattle grazing region. And so afterwards there was much concern that the cattle would be ingesting the radioactive fallout. So UCLA sent in a very, you know, sort of in ex extensive team to check that out, and they concluded that the Trinitite, the radiation, was not getting into the ecosystem. That it remained on the surface, but it was not being absorbed by um, by on the plants and animals. They captured birds, they captured rodents, they just, uh, they grew plants from the soil from around that region, and they found a number of damaged birds, a number of rodents whose gastrointestinal tract was radioactive, but they concluded that these, was nothing was being passed on to the next generation. So in 1949, they told the uh, the ranchers that uh, things were really as they were. You can still buy Trinitite. Uh, you can buy it on eBay, I discovered. Uh, and here is a Trinitite necklace. Uh, that's real gold and Trinitite uh, in, encased in real gold, uh, $35 a pop if you are interested uh, in the one antique store uh, uh, near, near uh, Trinity. Uh, now, what happened to Jumbo? 
And the answer was nothing. Jumbo was knocked on its side, but General Groves was afraid that there would be a great investigation if uh, Jumbo were not somehow used, so he instructed two lieutenants from the Kirtland Air Force Base to go and blow Jumbo's ends out. <laughs> Much to everybody's dismay, uh, Jumbo was ruined for no purpose at all. Uh, now, still, what do you do with it? There, there was Jumbo, and this chap is the head of the Socorro Chamber of Commerce, and he thought it would be great to roll Jumbo to downtown Socorro and make it in kind of a tourist attraction. Um, but the Jumbo now weighs 180 tons, um, but uh, th there's no way to get 180 tons across the Rio. So Jumbo had to stay where it was, and they rolled it uh, to right in front of the Trinity site. And Jumbo is very hard to explain because it was never used, but Jumbo is the only thing that you can see <laughs> at Trinity. If you did not know something had happened at Trinity, you would not know. Uh, it's all in your imagination, except for Jumbo. And look how thick the walls are. 